waiting for the light. Wait for the red light. Let me just take a few minutes. Uh, one, one second, dude. <laughs> See that camera up there? Go, there, yeah, there we go. go. <laughs> All right, so we are back. We are with. I'm, I'm being captured, huh? Yeah, we're with That's D. Hansen, who is our uh, um, our sewer uh, district on our sewer district board, and he's the chairman. And I'd ask him to come give a report to us. And we, had, three of us, had had a chance to go tour a new facility in North Salt Lake too, and had a nice morning with him. So, D. And, and I would offer to do that of others if they would like to uh, go out, uh, because I think it's fairly interesting uh, to see what's going on. Very good. Anyway, Mayor Wilkinson, Council members, uh, appreciated. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to represent Centerville. I think this is a. Uh, it's been a neat opportunity. I'm a civil engineer, and so that fits in with, with what goes on in the district, um, to uh, you know assist them in making decisions that involve engineering. We are very fortunate to have Dal Wayman as the general manager. He's the type of guy that uh, makes things work, and he makes them work inexpensively. Uh, we could talk about numbers of uh, employees as compared to other districts, uh, Snyderville District, for instance. Uh, and I better not keep talking or get in trouble <laughs> on that. So, <laughs> at any rate, we do it. Uh, we do a good job. Uh, Dal does a good job. Staff does a good job. Let me talk a little bit about these uh, projects. And as I told uh, uh, Councilman uh, Ivy, uh, why the hell did you raise our rates? <laughs> and, and hopefully the letter that we sent out um, helped explain some of it. Let me explain to you why that occurred. We started out with the food waste project collection, food waste. And it makes a lot of sense uh, to collect that. It's, uh, you know, those of us who grew up on a farm, I don't know how many of you <laughs> are old enough to fit that mold, but you always had a bucket by the back door. All the scraps went in the bucket uh, and they went out to the pigs. And so potato peelings, apple peelings, anything like that. And the pigs loved it and they grew <laughs> and we enjoyed that. That isn't occurring anymore, so it goes in the landfill. The landfills are being inundated with food waste. About 40% of all produce that goes into grocery stores is thrown out as waste. Uh, you know, it spoils, they trim off the lettuce leaves. You, you do the same thing in your homes. Uh, somebody said the other day to me, that, well, should we be putting our scraps in the gar garbage grinder? And send it down the line. And I said, right now we would generate gas on that. Now, I don't know that I want to suggest that you start doing all that. We'd rather have it come as food waste in a more concentrated form so that it can go into the digester uh, directly without having to be in uh, uh, what? Mixed with all that water. Anyway, let's go back to the project. The initial project was the food waste collection. And it came to us as a suggestion to look at. It had been looked at uh, in the Salt Lake Valley. And they, for various reasons, they had, a, I think they have 17 different entities. And uh, you can imagine a board that size gets a little tough to, you know, well, they couldn't agree. Anyway, they dropped the project. And so Alder Construction and uh, Alpha Engineering came to us and said, are you interested in, in looking at this as a joint project? And uh, we looked at it. We've looked at it now for about three years. Studied it, looked at it. We thought it's a no-brainer. It is not new technology. It's existing technology. It's things we already know how to do and, and is being done all over in Europe already and some places in the United States. So that was the first project, and we thought, as we got into it, we thought, well, it makes a lot of sense. So we said to uh, our partners, well, you tell us if you can line up contracts with school districts, with Swires Coca-Cola, with Pepsi-Cola, with 
Dan and Yogurt and all these people who have tremendous amount of waste uh, and the grocery uh, stores as well. And so they started putting together and we now have signed intent contracts and we're actually actually taking waste from Dan and Yogurt already. We're putting those in our existing digesters. Now, because we haven't got the hookup to Questar or Dominion, excuse me, with Dominion, we're not selling them gas, we're just burning it, flaring it. Uh, once we get the connection all hooked up and the pressure system to put it in the pipelines, then that gas will be captured uh, and put in into the pipeline and be sold. Now, the thing that's really important is that it's green gas because it's renewable. Uh, the gas that you get from Dominion that comes from their wells is, uh, is not green gas, I believe they call it black gas because it's not renewable. When it's gone, it's gone. California is anxious to buy green gas. They're, they have businesses that want to be able to say it's green. You say, well, will they get the green gas that we produce? No, it goes into the pipeline and you'll get it, I'll get it, wherever it goes down the line. But California is paying a premium to get the credits for that. Similar to the parks thing you're talking about, getting credits for <laughs> wetlands. I won't get into that one. <laughs> um, so anyway, the project we think turned out to be ideal. We started on it. We have contracts with Swatter's Coca-Cola, Dan and Yogurt, and a lot of uh, school districts, others. And we have a market per gas. We've already got a price on our gas when we start pumping it into the pipeline. So that's a, a profitable project. We didn't plan to raise any rates in that venue. Well, then they came along and e, uh, EPA and the state uh, water quality board are saying, we need to reduce nutrients. Our wastewater coming off our treatment plants is pretty high in nutrients, ammonia and, and other things that <coughs> We, we made the argument, we made the argument for several years, what difference does it make if it goes into Great Salt Lake? Well, everybody isn't in that condition, you know, we can dump right to Great Salt Lake. But the state's attitude uh, coming from the federal government as well is, well, you need to do it because you can. Well, if we had to rebuild our treatment plants, we'd probably spend $150 million we don't have to by going to what we now call a green algae project, and that's where the glass tubes uh, get involved. We're actually taking the waste stream coming off from the, from the treatment facility, the water that's taken off uh, and runs through and is, has a culture that's injected into it to grow algae and the mayor and Robin and, and Ivy have uh, been out and seen that. And we have what we call a cultural fence. It's that if we had something that happened to the big plant, we need to have starter. And so that little plant is, that little tiny plant that is tiny, uh, is running all the time. If the big plant, for some reason, uh, you know, sometimes we get water coming off the refineries or something that could kill our culture. And so we'd have to start over. Well, that little culture, we call it culture fence. It's so we can start up again. We're, we're keeping the starters going. All of our tests on the algae, we initially said, well, we don't know how good the algae is going to be because we're using wastewater. Uh, so, you know, is it going to be good for human consumption? And our initial thought was, no, it probably isn't. But it's ideal for fish food, it's ideal for uh, uh, dairy feed, it's ideal for land supplement. I mean, it has so many markets right now, and we already have a guaranteed price on the algae that we will produce. We have now ordered 143 miles of glass tube, four inch glass tubing. It's coming out of Germany. Uh, 
I, I, I joked uh, and said uh, we didn't make America great. We went outside of the United States to, to get our glass too, but they were the only place in the world that could do it to the quality we had to have. Um, those pro that algae project is going to be a money maker, but when we decided we would look at that, the State of Water Quality Board said, oh gosh, if that's going to reduce the uh, nutrient level, and, it, and by the way, it has proved to be, we're coming out with almost zero nutrients that off this water that's being grown algae. If it's going to do that, we're really interested. We'll give you a very low interest loan of $25 million to build the algae project if you'll do that. And so we said, okay. We sailed along greatly, feeling really good. And then we started getting down to satisfying the attorneys and, and all those who were looking at contracts uh, for the uh, uh, loans. And they come back and said, oh, well, you know, we don't, we don't know for sure that your sales are going to be there to pay this off. So you have to raise your rates so that we've got a guaranteed revenue stream. Now, we firmly believe, and say to you, that we believe that we will reduce those. We could even come up with zero sewer rates. Uh, because we're not allowed to have profit. Uh, and if we start making so much money on the food waste, gas produced, and the algae that we sell, uh, we have no choice but to reduce rates. Uh, How long do you think that could take? We think that we may be into it. Uh, you remember, Mayor, they talked a little bit about that. Was it five, five years? Four, four to five years. Four to five years, thanks. Um, that we think then we will come start doing the profit on it. But that takes about five years to start breaking even on, on that. That's the time frame when they've paid back the debt. Yeah. They should show the profit ahead of that, but they're gonna, they, it has to be dedicated to the debt for a period of time. Right. Thank so you. Yep. So, uh, and I don't know how much more to tell you. We think it's going well. I'll show you some pictures of it. Uh, uh, and we can just clip, click through them fairly quickly. I, I looked on my computer to find the ones for the algae project and couldn't find them. <laughs> you know how computers hide stuff at times. Uh, anyway, here's just some pictures. And you can click through those. That's kind of small. It just basically shows all the things that are, that are going on. Uh, the big, the huge digesters, all the valving and stuff that's going in. It's about a $45 million project. This is, a, that was the receiving building there. The trucks will come through that door that was off to the right side. This is all the for the bio waste, is that right, D? This is all for the bio waste? Yeah, this is all the bio waste. Okay. This isn't the algae project. The algae strictly uses the water that comes off the treatment. Um, they pull into the receiving building. They back up. They dump their loads of stuff. It has to be sorted because, you know, people throw old engine blocks away, <laughs> things that don't run well through a grinder. Um, so it has to be sorted and looked at. Um, that's not a pleasant job. It's uh, almost hand operated. We went to Colorado and watched the guys doing it, and I'm glad I don't have to do it because <laughs> uh, that uh, stuff is pretty yucky. Um, it's sorted. The things that can be sorted out that are recyclable will be taken off. There will be a series of little doors. There will be bins outside those doors. And they'll scoop up the plastics and the aluminum and whatever they can salvage. Swires Coca-Cola on theirs, uh, they collect outdated soda pop. It's almost straight sugar. That's straight energy. That produces gas like you wouldn't believe. So, you know, while lettuce don't produce much gas, uh, sugar does. Um, 
they'll bring it in, we'll crush the cans, the, the liquid will all run into, be put into our digesters, and then the aluminum cans will be taken back as far. That's, they wanted those back, it's their, rather than us selling it, they want to keep it selling. So I don't know how much more to give you. Uh, you've, got, you've spent a long night already. That's fabulous, D. Uh, unless there's some questions. Uh, so you kind of, uh, one question if I may? Yeah, yeah. You kind of alluded early in your, early, early in your, no, no, no. Early in your comments, just a minute ago, you alluded to residential food waste. Yes. There is no, I didn't understand that there was any anticipation of collecting residential food waste. There isn't. We would love to do that. If that ever become, you know, we have a green barrel, we have a blue barrel, and we have a black barrel. <laughs> Maybe we could have a little food waste barrel. <laughs> I, I don't suspect we'll see that immediately, but it's, it, may, it may come. They're doing it in Europe. They're actually collecting it. On the green gas, is there any intention to generate power locally, like a small power plant, if, if Dominion isn't buying enough gas? Dominion is buying the gas, so we're not going to produce any power. Uh, we may pull some of it off to run our own system, um, but we've done that in the past, and it's a little tough keeping the generators running, and so I don't know. It's almost better for us to sell it and let them worry about it. that part of it. Fabulous. Any other questions? Well, Dee, we thanks so much for your service. Uh, like I said, he chairs the, the sewer board as well, too. And thank you for your family. Uh, Dee's daughter uh, also serves on our planning commission. So, so their family is putting in uh, some good service to our city. Well, I so. appreciate Centerville, appreciate all you do that make it so nice for us to live here. So, yeah. thank you. Thanks so much for okay. coming. Thank you. Now I have a flash drive. Yes. yes. All right, so moving ahead, uh, Steve, are you okay if we skip yes. to Marcus? Yes, that's the intent. Okay, so Marcus uh, is here to give us our monthly financial report. Okay, thanks. Yeah, if we go into cash, there was a question last month that I wanted to answer a little bit better this, this month, and the question was, is the general fund cash increased pretty significantly um, over the last year? And see, general, so April of 17, it was at the 324,000. The reason it went down so low that month is we transferred, did the budgeted transfers of about 500,000 during that month. In May, it went up quite a bit because we received a $365,000 cash bond, restricted money. And there were two other funds that owned, owed the general fund about 110,000, and so that was paid back. So between those two things, that brought us up to that 900 and some odd thousand dollar balance. Um, at the end of June, most of that cash there is just restricted. And between June of 17 until the end of April, our unrestricted cash has increased um, 552,000. Um, the, the, the reason that, that increased that much, I mean, the net income for year to date this year is at 852,000. Um, the reason the cash didn't go up as high as the, the net income is because there's about 300,000 of um, balance sheet adjustments. Um, for example, um, at the end of June, there wasn't any prepaid expenses. At the end of April, there's about 150,000 in prepaid expenses. Most of it is for the fire department. Um, but that means that cash has gone out of 150,000, but that 150,000 hasn't been expensed. And so that would cause the net income to be 150,000 higher than the cash output, if that makes sense. Um, and then the same thing with receivables. Receivables are about $50,000 higher at the end of April 
than they were at the end of end of June. And so with a higher receivable, that's going to increase net income, but it's not going to change cash at all. Um, and then just a month or so ago, the general fund loan the RDA fund about $116,000 that will be repaid. Um, but the, that 116000 affects cash, but it doesn't affect the net income. Um, so so it, it's the, really the, the increase is due to just the, the net income. The revenues are higher than the expenses by about $852,000 and then those balance sheet adjustments. And I'll, when we go through the general fund summary, I'll, I'll highlight a few things of where we're so much higher this year compared to last but, but we're still uh, receiving the benefit of the property tax influx right, though that is, right. is spending down as we finish the year correct that that was the the biggest factor in the net income um, being so high is property taxes um, five hundred thousand dollars higher um, right now than it was last year at this time I mean so we're ahead 500,000 compared to budget on the on the property tax. Um, well, we're ahead 100,000 100, budget because we anticipated a 400,000 increase. Okay. We actually got yeah, 500,000. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, 100,000, but it's 500,000 higher than last right. year. Right. Um, right. The year to date, so the April 17. Yeah. Um, we're, we're quite a bit higher than last year. Um, the other two funds where cash increased significantly are the transportation fund and the drainage fund. And those, I mean, from year to date, the 10 months of fiscal 18, the transportation has increased about 460000 and that's just what the net income is in, in that fund. So basically just our revenue is 465000 higher than our expenses during this fiscal year. And the drainage fund is the exact same thing. The net income is just 540,000 during fiscal 18. And so that's increased the, the cash. Um, but overall, I mean, cash is, is up quite a bit. Um, I mean, it's down from last month, but most of that's due to a large uh, bond payment that was made of over 500,000 um, in the month of April. But any questions on cash or? Okay, we'll move on to the next page. And these are just the, the restrictions on cash. We can see the general fund um, had quite a bit of unrestricted cash, so that continues to increase, which is what we want to see. Um, the theater reserve fund, I mean, the RDA fund can cover that theater reserve fund and so that that's good um, we do have a little bit of impact fee uh, money in the water fund and the drainage utility fund and then there's still that uh, due to do from between the park and the the wrap tax fund and then the general and the, the RDA fund um, but any questions on the restricted cash okay and if we look at the general fund summary, um, this is where I think it's line 53, clear down at the bottom, that we can see the total net income of that $852,000. Um, so the, the revenue is at the 87% um, tax revenue. I mean, like Steve said, we're 100000 over what the budget was for um, for property tax, um, which was, so overall taxes were at 5.8 million, where last year at this time we're at 5.1 million, and that's due to the property tax and then sales tax is up 200,000 compared to to prior year, and but it, it's right along with budget, so that was kind of expected. Um, so overall revenues are at 87 percent which um, we're, we're at 83% of the year is, is over, so we're a little bit ahead. Um, and then on the expenditure side, we're at 77%. Can I hit you with a question? Yeah. So, um, and then maybe I've interrupted you, but it's really to Steve. 
sales tax. So we got one more big, don't we get four big months and eight moderate months in sales tax collections? The four big months you're thinking of are uh, November, December, coming two months later. Yeah, yeah. We, we've gotten those. Yeah, we've gotten those, but um, there's 10 months worth of sales tax in this report, but two months of those will be replaced by July and August this year because they're actually revenues for this fiscal year. So even though we've got 10 months of report, we'll get the May distribution, the June distribution, and then we will replace last year's uh, July and August numbers in this report with this year's July and August numbers, which should be a little higher. Right, than right. Last they normally year's. are. So I'm not sure what you're asking, Bill. I'm, I'm saying, are we going to have some gain there? Well, we over ex what you're showing over yeah. over this remaining six hundred thousand, six hundred fifteen thousand. Uh, we think we'll we'll do a little better. I think our budget was based on a four, four percent, four and, to four and a half, and we think it's going to be in the six to seven percent increase instead of four to four and a half. Okay. Then the other question that I had, or two questions, um, licenses and permits. Yeah, down. We're going to be waiting. Are we yep. We'll be uh, when we. Yeah, when we bring you uh, budget amendments in June, we'll be tweaking these things up or down, and yeah, so there's some offset there, the licenses and permits and the, and the other development-related things like uh, zoning fees, subdivision fees. Those and what about fines and forfeitures? Is, is those are actually budget? ahead of budget. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. that was good. We finally leveled out and stopped losing ground on that. And kind of a on, on that, um, the court told me that they moved quite a bit out of the the Bell account. About ten thousand, I think quite, they said. Yeah, and so we were able to recognize that as revenue that it was just in that Bell in that trust account, the liability account for quite a while. So I really don't know how long it's been in there. They just said, well, we can take it out, and so we were able to take that to revenue. Those are unclaimed um, bails, bail money. That, oh, bail. bail. I said bail, and I was going to ask, can you Sorry. clarify for me? Yeah. Bail. <laughs> bail. Now um, it makes sense. Yeah. And <laughs> I, was, I was told it was about $10,000, okay. so that's, that's one-time money that's part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, on, on the expenditure side, <clears throat> I mean, I just ran through a few of these and compared April this year to April last year. I mean, uh, overall, finance expenses are down about 140,000. Police is up about 40 grand from last year. Um, streets is down about 120. Um, yeah, let me part. let me explain something. This is a good place to do it, Marcus. Uh, okay. Jake and I figured this out the other day. This is good news. If you look at the executive department and the finance department in fiscal year 16, that was the year before we had the problems in the transition and what all, and you compare with the budgeted amount in the proposed budget for next fiscal year, there's a hundred and you combine the personnel costs for the executive and the finance or now known as management services, the personnel costs next year are $140,000 less than they were in fiscal year 16. That's where we get some of the capacity to do what we're doing in the proposed budget. That includes Marcus. That, and that's after accounting for uh, the contract, yes. So, so uh, expenditures are showing at 77% of budget. Um, have we got things that aren't in, or would yeah. be running 10% yeah, Favorable. no, no, because, I mean, what happens every year is um, June is by far the highest, I mean, typically the highest month, and it's really not because everyone just tries to get in and everything spend it all in the last, you know, month or so. It's because um, invoices will come in all through July and August that relate to the old year, and so we'll have to accrue all those back. On these monthly financials, there's not time you know, you can't wait two months to accrue all the invoices back because, you know, we get them, you know, some up to two months late. 
Um, and so, yeah, June, the expenses are going to be um, higher. So I, I, it's hard to say. I doubt we're going to be at 90%. I mean, it's... We, Jake and I have taken a stab at estimating the uh, current fiscal year through 12 months, and um, we think that on the expenditure side, we'll probably be at least $100,000 under budget. On the revenue side, about $200,000 over, the, uh, more than the revenue estimate, so we're thinking so about $300,000. I just don't want to promise you that. I'll, I'll give you a more reliable answer in June. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but any, any other questions about the general fund? And we'll move on. All right, so next page is the, the RDA fund. I mean, we're at 86% overall. Um, I mean, that's mostly the, the property tax revenue and then the lease payments from the theater. On the expense side, we're at 74%. Um, I mean, most of that is just transfers for debt service, Utopia and parks. Um, then in the line six is the expenditures for the Legacy Crossing Theater and the admin overhead charge. Um, but o overall, I mean, we, we know we're down a little bit on the on the property tax, um, but overall the, the fund looks good. We have the cash to cover the theater reserve fund, and so overall that fund looks okay. Um, recreation's a little bit behind on the revenue. Um, it's because the summer recreation revenues haven't come in yet. It'll, so the next two months we yeah. should see that. Because we, we've been seeing some baseball come in, but I guess that'll um, keep coming. Um, on the expenditure side, it's mostly just salaries and um, benefits and, and that sort of thing. But overall, it's at 52%, so the expenditures are low as well on the rec fund. Um, the wrap tax fund is right on with budget. I mean, it's at 84% on the, the wrap tax money. Um, the expenditures are, are under. They're at 57%, and these are really just transfers to Park, Whitaker, um, then there's a payment to the um, Davis Arts Center. Center, Center Point. Center Point, yeah, Center Point Theater. Um, cemetery, not a whole lot there. I mean, just a few, a little bit of incomes come in. We haven't um, transferred any expenses to the, the general fund. We're going to wait till the end of the year to decide if we were going to do that or not. Um, and then the debt service fund on the next page, there, there was the, the bond payment was made, um, so we transferred the budgeted amount over to the debt service fund to make that payment. Um, How much was that? It's the $549,094 was the principal and interest. And that's the, that's the principal and interest on the account? Yeah. No, no, this is the Performing Arts Center. That's performing Arts. And that doesn't include this interest only payment that was made earlier in the fiscal year. So you'll see in the year to date column 588,000 of expenditures. That re represents all the, pay the two payment points in this year interest only payment and principal and interest more recently. And then, I mean, there's 2,500 left over, and that's for a trustee, trustee fees. fee. Trustees. Yeah. Um, and then the park fund, um, th we're going to have to do a budget amendment for this yeah. for this fund because of transfers that have come in from the RDA and the RAP tax. Um, I mean, that 50,000 in the park development on line five is the teeny pavilion. Yeah. Um, then we'll the, clean it all up in June. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, oh, and then the expenditure side, I mean, it's just that community park project. Um, and transportation fund, mm -hmm. the Prop 1 money's at 85%, so we're right on target there. The Class C road money's at 77 but... I mean, it's one that comes in every other month, so there's six payments on that. So I still think we're, we're my guess is we're going to be a little ahead. Um, not exactly sure how much, but I, I think we'll be okay on that. 
Um, then transfers right at 83% because that's just a transfer from the general fund that we make monthly. Um, the contributions are for the drainage, drainage parking. That's uh, from private developers that we're doing their work as part of our contract. Okay. Slurry yeah. seals and so forth. And all right, then on the expenditure side, um, not a whole lot this month, but um, there's projects upcoming yeah, for let, the let transportation fund. Yeah, the item on the fund. agenda tonight, we'll, we'll, we'll spend that money. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, um, and then Utopia Fund is just right um, as planned. I mean, it's 83% on the revenue, 83% on the, expen the expenditure to um, pay that Utopia payment. Now, on the next page with the Enterprise Fund, so I think what I'm going to do going forward on this is I'm going to kind of make it more clear on what the operating revenues are versus more the one-time construction type things. Because if you look on line four, that's the operating revenue, um, so the basic utility bills and, and that that comes in, and that's at 88%, so a little bit ahead of budget. The rest, um, like the one, two, and three, um, are more the, the construction. I mean, most of the one in the charges for service are for a couple water line um, projects with the Rimini and the Fred Hill um, water project. So some of those we'll have to do budget amendments for that just really don't know exactly how much is going to come in when these budgets are adopted. On the expenditure side, I mean, line seven is the, the normal operating expenses to run the, the water fund. That's at 80%, so we're, we're a little bit under. Um, then you see line eight, and the budget's at the 867,000, where you'd have to combine all the expenditures on line eight through, through 12, um, that I, I think we're gonna allocate those to the different lines. Um, but if you just count those line eight through 12, 456,000 has been spent on the construction related projects. And so that's at 53%. Um, so overall water fund looks good, uh, especially on those operations. And um, then we'll have to adjust things those on the, the budget side for the construction type things. On the sanitation fund, um, the operating line two uh, revenue, right, 84%, so right with budget. Expenditures, 81%, so it uh, looks, looks good. Um, then the drainage utility fund, um, the operating revenue is line three at 84%. The expenditures are 45% on line five, and that's another one where there's going to be upcoming projects. Um, so the, Cash will be there to help out with those. Um, and then the telecom fund um, looks fine. I mean, the expenditures, there were a couple months paid just due to the, the timing of the, the, the payments. But um, I mean, the revenue comes in through the utility billing system, and then the expense just goes out to UIA um, through a check. And the last fund, the Whitaker Fund, on the next page, um, I mean, most of the revenues um, from the general fund and, and the wrap tax fund, there's a little bit of donations, but it's mostly transfers. And then the payments, the expenditures are for salaries, the parking lot, and then the restoration project. Um, but any questions about the, the summary? Tell me again why the the negative $109,000 uh, subdivision water line project on line 12 in water. Oh, that, that's, so that's, Just it's it an equation. It's taken the year to date actual uh, minus the current budget and there's no current yeah, budget no there. Um, because the budget is all in line eight, but that 867,000 is actually, we need to allocate that between all the other 
those areas. Yeah. So the what we one. do is we keep track of each of those projects. And at the end of the year, yeah, we'll just allocate that lump sum into each of those projects. It's a lot easier for us to do, uh, to keep track that way, In rather this. than going the other way. And that particular line is uh, paid for, the project's paid for by developers. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how to predict that yeah. accurately, so there'll be, but there'll be revenue also to offset that if there wasn't any money budgeted for it. Those are the, Steve, the subdivision oil line projects. Those are the ones that, that I sign where. Um, uh, contracts. Yeah, and we go out and get the bid, mm -hmm. but the contractor pays for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Right, and that, that's where the line eight through 12, if you take all those expenses um, against that current budget of the 867 amount, um, we're at 53%, so we're still well under that um, 867,000, you know, year to date, um, but we'll get that allocated. But any other questions? You done? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I mean, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, do you have a date to when the auditors do the auditors come out and do field work? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be here. Um, we haven't really set a date, but I, uh, they normally like to come around Labor Day, just early September. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So that's a ways off then, still. Yeah. Because you're already yeah. asked June thirtieth. We've got right. to do some in inventory counts at year end at the water um, department, and then yeah, it'll take us a couple months to know what things should be. So just let me know. I'd like to uh, yeah. meet them when they come. Okay, I will. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, Steve. Uh, shall we okay. skip it back to item eight? Eight with you. Kind of everything that's <laughs> left is you because. Um, okay. <laughs> D was my report, and Lynn Keddington was my report. And okay. That's what I've done the last couple that's weeks. That's a lot of pressure on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you refer to the staff report, you can mm -hmm. see how I've summarized the uh, revenue versus the expenditures, the commitments that we've made, the earlier contract that you've awarded plus this contract uh, still leaves us uh, $128,000, and we are want to, I've identified some ways some of that's going to be used. Now the Jennings Lane one, I want to make sure you understand what that's all about um, and whether you have any objection to it because what's, what staff has recommended, Randy and Kevin, is that, um, you know, that Fred Hale's project is going on up there, but on the south side of Lund Lane, there's a piece of... Jennings. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jennings Lane, thank you. On the south side of Jennings Lane, east of Maine, there's a piece that uh, there's no curb and gutter, and the asphalt is only like a strip down the middle. And staff is recommending that we, if, if the property owner will pay for the curb and gutter, that we would pave that little strip that remains between the existing asphalt and the um, it long, is it Dane's house there? There's two homes there where... Um, Danes are on the top, uh, there's southeast. A, so there's two houses of frontage there where the road on the south side is not finished. And uh, we've That's asked, correct, asked yeah. the property owners uh, the, if they would put in the curb and gutter, pay for the curb and gutter, and we would check with the council to see if you're okay with us paving that strip in between. So is that a, a deferment that then we would be calling on? to require them to do that? Uh, those property owners? Uh-huh. Well, no. The idea is that we would pay for the pavement. They would pay for the curb and gutter. Right, but why is it the curb and gutter w wasn't put in at the time of development? I don't know. This is way back. And so that's different than like a sidewalk deferment agreement, it's deferral the, agreement? Yeah, I'm not familiar with the situation, but we do have a number of places where there's construction without improvements because so they were is that, built so long ago. What I'm, I, what I'm asking, are, are we just asking them if they feel like doing it or are we requiring that? It's just I'm a voluntary, it's a voluntary thing. We don't have an agreement that we can act on. Is that what you're asking? Uh -huh. No. And would we want to do that strip of pavement regardless so that in the future when it got decided to be done or not? 
If they don't do the curb and pay for the curb and gutter, I wouldn't recommend we do the pavement. So it was a way of offering incentive to finish that side of the road if they would pay for the curb and gutter. Uh, and we're estimating that the pavement part of that's about 25,000, although we have no final deal inked yet. And the property owner hasn't, to my knowledge, given a final okay for the curb and gutter. So this is something I'm just making you aware of that, and seeing if you have any pushback on it. While we're talking about this, I have a question, <clears throat> and I thought about it before and when um, Rick was talking. I know that some cities have a fund that when s residents come, they have a certain amount of sidewalk fund. If you will, if they'll pay half, we'll pay half. Mm -hmm. Would cer certainly make our money go further and when we're talking about so much for sidewalks, if we pulled out 30,000 to match residents, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure which city, I think it's Farmington has like a waiting list. Bountiful also. And you. It was something I was going to bring up at the work session right as we ended. Yeah. So. And so, yeah, I think it would be a great idea if, you know, how, depending on how everybody else feels, if we took a, a certain amount of that sidewalk money and. Yeah, if you remember the uh, list of potential of, of issues and uh, questions that I've asked you, and, and one of the th ideas yet to be decided upon is whether you want to establish a cost sharing option on some of that. So. Well, and like he said with his, I mean, so he wants it, even though it might not be the worst <clears throat> place in town, we can take care of that section for half the You're price right. we could right. somewhere mm -hmm. else, and it would certainly make our, our money go a lot further, and it would take care of some of the spots where we have people that are, I mean, there are some people that really don't care, but there are other people that it really bothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should include that in our discussion that we're okay. still yet to have, and I, I, I sense I need to get on to that discussion <laughs> sooner rather than later <laughs> back with the council. We kind of got interrupted with other things and I always I still have the note potentially scheduling it for a council meeting and it's been so busy but I haven't forgotten it. So uh, then we also have the uh, wet project with West Bountiful 15,000 for up to 15,000 for engineering our part of that but we're going to get a great value for that 15,000 bucks paid for by UTA and the county. Um, and then the modification of the center and Main Street intersection, uh, we're, look, we're studying that and hoping that uh, UDOT might participate with us in a bigger scale project involving uh, uh, drainage on Main Street longitudinally there. But even if they don't, we think we ought to go ahead with something to reduce that impact okay. there. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. I, th I thought I had been told in the past that it was impossible to fix because well, of the system underneath the road being so high. Well, then that's, yeah. So we, in addition to this 20000 for the actual road alterations, we would spend some drainage utility money to alter the drainage. Dig things deeper. Uh, there. Okay. You, you really, yeah, you probably put a pipe instead of a gutter pan crossing Center Street, you'd have a pipe. Uh, under there and, and the road would, both main and center would be raised where they come together to eliminate that big dip. Is that the same sort of thing that needs to happen with the lake that the resident came and talked to us about? Uh, like no, no, that just needs a an inlet and a pipe to over to uh, connect with the storm drain some further away. Okay. Uh, and we're looking at that, by the way. That's excellent. That's being designed, yes. Okay. That center main, when I met with you and Randy and Kevin, uh, any more, uh, they haven't come back with anything further. I mean, you dot, you mean? Then. You dot, you mean? Well, you and I talked oh. and with Randy and Kevin. Well, they are. They have talked to you dot, and we're trying to get you dot to agree to a bigger project. Okay. But if they don't, then we think we should go ahead with this smaller scale project to fix the problem right there. So there's proposed uses of some of that 128,000. <clears> um, but uh, we can go ahead with this other contract that's on the agenda and I would recommend that you award that contract as proposed to advance paving 
and construction for the streets overlay project 2018 in the amount of $734,939.45. So moved. Second. We have a second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do I need a roll call there? Oh, okay, roll call. I'm looking at the clock, trying to save time. <laughs> Councilman McEwen, roll Aye. call vote. Aye. 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 Five zero on the roll call vote. Great. Uh, item number nine, Steve, right? We got yeah, that. yeah, number nine. By uh, law. You need to adopt a tentative budget. Um, I mean, you could adopt the proposed budget as the tentative budget, leaving that lump sum there to be decided. Uh, we can just kind of characterize that as decisions yet to be made by the council, if you'd like, or if you want to give me directive as to that you've agreed on some of that to be could be re-identified or re-characterized in the tentative budget, <clears throat> or we just leave it for now as the big lump sum and and just describe to the residents that it's being considered for these purposes and um, the public hearings on the 5th. And That's what I would do. So I move that we adopt the tentative budget with that lump sum, but identify the things being considered and set a public hearing for June 5th, 2018. And we would uh, circulate to you the draft of the new budget newsletter. We'd get that to you in advance and let you react to it. Second. Got a motion and a second. Councilman Entz. Aye. 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 I didn't, did I, did you include in that motion setting the public hearing for, yes. okay, yes. I'm not getting tired, I guess. Motion passes 5-0. I'm pretty sure I'll probably yeah. start restating <laughs> these motions. Okay. Okay. Um, item number thir thir 13. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I put on, on Novus, I think it might have been just today, the minutes from our First meeting of the Foothills Management Task Group is the label we've put on it. That consists of Corey as the lead, <clears throat> myself, the police chief, the parks director, the GIS specialist, uh, in addition to Corey, his assistant planner, makes up this, this uh, planning group, this team. Uh, the minutes are there. A couple of the key things that are happening are um, uh, the drainage study being and contour mapping being done by ESI. He, Kevin is committed to have that all done by the end of June. <clears throat> and the other thing underway right now is a survey of users in the foothills. Uh, there's a young man, I, 19, 20 years old, Bruce said that the last couple of weekends has been up there at the junction of 100 South and the Firebreak Road <clears throat> sets up there and uh, administers a survey, uh, stops people and asks questions. Um, uh, what are you, what are you, use are you gonna make, what are you gonna be doing up here? Uh, <laughs> what improvements do you think are, are needed? What, uh, some demographic information, what cities are, are you from, age, that kind of thing. <clears throat> that will continue for the next week or two up there, those surveys to give us some feedback. He's there Saturday morning? <coughs> He's on weekends, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I don't know if he's there on Sunday. I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's been there on Saturdays. And is he a volunteer? Yeah, he's a volunteer. service employee? A, a what? He's a volunteer. Yeah, he's a volunteer. Yep. Cool. Yep. Is it, would it be wise to have him there at other times other than just Saturday morning, like? like all the people who walk during the week. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm thinking. Because they usually don't go on Saturdays. Don't go on the weekends because there's too much vehicle traffic up there. But. <coughs> well, I'll talk with Bruce. Bruce is the one, I think, who's kind of directing that young man in his work. I think it'd be good to have him there for a couple of weekdays. I think you're right. It's a different user group, weekends mm -hmm. and weekdays. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Weekends, weekdays. Um, Unfortunately, there's a total, a vast amount of variety 
Uh, personally, my use is generally in the morning, and there's a lot of traffic in the morning. Weekdays, mm -hmm. mornings? Yeah. yeah. Weekday mornings. <coughs> okay. Um, let's, starting quite early. Let's make sure we hit that then. And there's a lot of traffic at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So weekdays, afternoons? Mm -hmm. uh, like kind of late afternoon? Yeah, I'd say from 3.30 to 6.30 maybe. Yeah. 3.30 to idea. what? 3.30 to 6.30. You get a lot of traffic, but from 3.30 to 6.30, do you have to cover the whole thing? I don't know. I think any coverage is going to give us access to a lot of... What do, you, what do you mean by morning time frame? I'm not, an early, I'm not an early bird. I'm at 8.30 until... I'm, I'm sometime between 8.30 six. and 10, but there's a lot of people that are up there at 6.30, 6 7 o'clock. I'd say 6 to 10 maybe. Yeah. Now, I don't know that we can ask someone to be there from 6 to 10. But, <laughs> but we, may be able to, if we may be able to get some more volunteers to do that. I, I think this is going to be a really important part of the picture. And I so do, too. And so why not get multiple volunteers? I think we could get time. multiple volunteers to go up and will, be willing to do that. I mean, if you have do your you have set some, of questions. Do you have some, if you want to send me some names. Uh, okay, people I'll do that. Think I'm, be I'm sure I that. can get you some. So he's at, he's at, uh, at First South? Where First South meets the Firebreak Road. So I would, I would say we, uh, I mean, we've got three primary access locations. You've got Par First South, you've got Parish, and you've got... Um, um, well, if they're coming up to, if they're, they're coming they're from the Parish the one, side. they'll be intercepted there at that junction. And what we're no, interested... We're only, worry, you know, we're only worrying about the South. The 180 area. acres, yeah. And from the Bountiful side, they can access on bike or foot, but I don't think uh, vehicular access from Bountiful is. Can you? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe motorcycles, I guess you can. So we're not getting yeah, that I one. <laughs> it's a little sketchy, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not getting that one, but we are getting, if they're coming up okay. from Parish and then heading over there to that one. Okay. So yeah, let me know if you've got some volunteer names. I'll, I'll talk to Bruce tomorrow about this. Okay. We want to hit hit May hard because come later it gets kind of hot and yeah. I think yeah, that's great. Beautiful. Numbers that's fall absolutely off. Great. So that's my report for that. Unless you got questions for me, we, we're meeting again as a task force group, task group uh, later this month, monthly at least. I know that when we um, did the Island View Park user survey a couple or a few years ago, it was a Boy Scout who did that as part of his Eagle project. project. So mm -hmm. I'm sure Bruce has thought of that, but check his list of people wanting projects. Yeah. Okay. All right. Some very quick things under city manager report. Uh, first of all, the uh, I've sent you an email about the taxing entity meeting on May 30th. Uh, I'm not in asking you to go, but you're invited by the county, and I've got Bill and Stephanie so far. I will add them to the number that I'll send to the county. Um, if any what of the others, that again? that's on May 30th at 8 a.m. at the county building annual meeting of taxing entities where they uh, answer questions. We went last year; it was very helpful, particularly last year. Is that the bill on 21st South? In, oh, in the county, <laughs> 21st South. No. <laughs> Working Salt, Salt Lake, so yeah, okay. So yeah, if any of the rest of you want to go, let me know. But I'll include Bill and Stephanie, myself and Jake. Did you? I think I can go, Steve. Okay. Okay. So I'll include you, the mayor. Uh -huh. All right. Great. Oh, they'll think we've sent a great delegation over there. <laughs> All these elected officials. That's great. Um, Intimidate them. The May 22nd, a week from tonight, 5.45, the joint work session with the Planning Commission. Dinner available about 5.30. 8 o'clock, special RDA meeting. I've talked with Corey. He feels like we're going to be done by 8 o'clock. <clears throat> uh, and I've informed Fred Hill and Chad Salmon that that's their opportunity to come and present whatever they've got for you. Um, if they have like a PowerPoint or anything that they could send ahead of time, I've like asked them for that. that. Yeah, I've asked them for that, and I'm not. I told them to get it to me by tomorrow because I'm gone Thursday and Friday. Yeah, you and I talked. Steve. We both felt that same way. I said if they have some information mm -hmm. beforehand, I've asked get them. Get it to us. Yeah. Okay. 
I can't promise anything, but I've asked them. Uh, and then the uh, gala uh, reservations, Bill, yes, for two, Robin for two, George for two, uh, Tammy, one or two, make that decision so we get closer to that deadline. Uh, Mayor, no, because he's out of town. Stephanie? Yes. Two? Two. Okay, great. I sent that to you, sorry about that. Um, then, uh, uh, Tammy, if you uh, brought somebody with you, that would be uh, two, four, that's ten. So I would go ahead and... Uh, that's the one table. Yes. Oh, that's actually eight is a table, so... And I've sent the check for that. That's 2000 But you authorized 2500 so I can send the other 500 which it sounds like I ought to do. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. That's what I need to know. That's it. I'm done, Mayor. I'm Thank really you. done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it, Steve. Um, okay, any net meet reason for closed meeting? At this hour, are you kidding? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's early. Well, it's on the agenda. <laughs> Okay, I do not have any appointments to boards or committees. Um, we, um, I guess we're looking at a motion to adjourn and to reconvene, is that correct? In an RDA meeting. For a quick RDA meeting? Yes. Motion to adjourn the city council to convene the RDA with no intent to return to the council meeting. <laughs> do you Second. have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Closed meeting. No, meeting's done. Do you have signs for the council that I had? I wonder if those are yours leaning in the lobby. Out I received mine. Between the Hollings two double doors. Brought me mine. Are they still there? Oh, okay, I'll have one. Jack was saying he got locked out, or they got locked out, so that was the ones Thank they couldn't you. get to. Uh, so. um, I think there are still some. Bill, there. we'll look around when you, before you leave. So RDA minutes. We're ready. <laughs> really short. Okay. Um, we're convening an R RDA meeting, so we have item number one: uh, approval of minutes from our meeting of Tuesday, May first. They're pretty short. Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Second item on the agenda is to adopt the RDA fiscal year 2019 tentative budget and set a date for a public hearing. Steve? Well, you got any questions or just want to adopt the proposed budget as the tentative? And I would propose that we adopt the proposed budget as the tentative budget. Is that it or is it on the other way? And set way? a public hearing for the fifth. And set a public hearing for the fifth. Second. Um, roll call. Aye. 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 Uh, motion passes 5 0. The, the last item I'd like to postpone or table because I'm waiting still for some information from our city engineer that will be helpful to the designer to give me an estimate of regarding the conditions that are on site there so to, to what to the next regularly scheduled yeah, RDA meeting yeah it's not we're not in a hurry so until the next regular RDA meeting which would be the f fifth, fifth because we'll have a public hearing on the RDA budget on the fifth didn't we have something that needed to be done more quickly than that N no I mean Jack would like it to be done more quickly but uh, it's been a couple of years already and <laughs> okay. so, motion to table item three until the next regularly scheduled RDA meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. RDA may meeting is adjourned. <laughs> I get to vote on that one. <laughs> what do you get to vote on? <laughs> <laughs>